My name is Chandra Zenner Ford. I am uh, have two degrees from the University of Idaho. The first one was in 1988, the same year as our guest today. So we were undergrads together, but um, I uh, spent 25 years with the University of Idaho in my first stint. I was the assistant dean of the College of Business and took four years away with another adventure with uh, Mayor Dave Beter here in Boise. And then when Scott Green returned to be our leader, he hired me back and I have been serving as the uh, a special advisor in the president's office and also as the CEO of Southwest Idaho, which is my building is right behind me here and the screen. So um, when we were getting ready for today, um, we were super excited to talk about one of our outstanding alums, um, Dave Wagers. And before I introduce Dave, though, um, I hope everyone will um, just give us a moment to honor the victims, um, the students that we lost, uh, uh, now it's already been more than three weeks ago to some very tragic circumstances. And um, I just feel like we need to at least take a moment and honor them and their families and all the friends that were close to them. Um, Zana, Ethan, Madison, and Kaylee. So if we could just take a moment of silence and just send your positive thoughts and, and prayers and everything to their, to their families at this time. I think I'll say one of the more positive things around the circumstances that are unprecedented, as you all know, the one thing we have found is that the love and power of the Vandal family is truly phenomenal. Um, just the outpouring from across the country has been very fabulous and, and something we can all just know that's in our lives because everybody here is part of that family. So thank you for joining us. And um, I am, um, I have a, I, I'm excited that we're here and we get to introduce the new Vandal candy bar, but also talk a little bit about Dave Wagers, who is, Dave Wagers is, um, he, o he owns the oldest candy company in Idaho and maybe one of the oldest companies in Idaho. I'm not quite sure. Is it the oldest company in Idaho? No, uh, not quite, but uh, it's, it's, it's okay. definitely one of the oldest. We're, what are we going to be this year? 120, 122 this year? Yes. Phenomenal. So um, I hope everyone here has tried at least one of the candies in, 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 in the Idaho Candy Company repertoire, but um, I know I sure have. But um, the other thing that Dave Wagers does is he, he is very, very involved in this community. Not only does he own and lead the Idaho Candy Company, but he is on the uh, Boise School Board and during had to write it out during COVID. And so um, we can share stories about being an educational institution during COVID and what leaders had to do during that time. But I personally, as a, as a parent of two kids who did go through the Boise Public School District, I'm super glad that people like Dave are willing to give their personal time to lead in our community. So from my perspective, not only does he make great candy and own a, a long-standing company in Idaho, and he's a vandal, but he also helps his community in many other ways. So we, um, we, we use this opportunity for Dave to talk a little bit about the history of the company, um, maybe a little bit about his experience as a vandal and it, what he thinks the, his vandal education did to help him. I want to say that um, all three of Dave's kids went to the University of Idaho and are all three of them now in graduate school, right? They're actually all three of them started medical school in August. So three, oh, wow. three all at once. So here wow. we go. That's good. <laughs> that's, that means you can't retire anytime soon. Probably. That, is, that, is, that is a little job insurance for a while. I'll be working for a little bit. <laughs> um, but then I'd also like to mention, because I just think this is such a funny thing, that um, Dave's wife, Jill, is a dentist. And I think that's really cool because, you know, a dentist and a candy maker, you know, you can't find a better, you know, combination, in my opinion, to help each other out. But um, uh, so I think at this time, we we um, we actually asked Dave to think about some questions going into this session for our cup of joe. 
And um, so I'm going to hand it over to you, Dave, and let you just talk a little bit about both your business and your life here in Boise and being a vandal. Sure. Well, thanks, Sandra. I really appreciate, you know, being here today. And, you know, it's it's fun to connect to see some of those names that I knew from a while back and yet meeting some new friends as well. Um, and thanks to the U of I for, you know, hosting this. But also, like you mentioned, um, you know, it's it's a sad time for the Vandals, but it's it's also a time for us to come together. And it's been fun to not fun to see that, but it's been it's good to see that it is a strong group. And I've had friends who, who knew these kids well and are working with those, you know, the, the, the people up there a lot. And it's the amount of effort that's going into it. And I really appreciate what you and, and especially what Scott has done as far as trying to communicate and keep the Vandal family strong. And so thank you for doing that. Um, well, that being said, we're here to talk a little bit about Dave and a little bit about Idaho Candy Company. We'll probably start with Idaho Candy because it's a little more interesting sometimes than Dave. Um, Idaho Candies, it's, it is the oldest candy company in Idaho. It's probably one of the lar largest independently owned candy company in Idaho as well. Um, so it was founded in 1901 by a guy by the name of T.O. Smith. And he started selling candy out of, you know, door to door out of shoe boxes because he came up to Idaho to do some construction and that job finished up and he knew how to make candy. And so he started doing that. Um, but he was able to grow it pretty fast and took on an investor in 1909 and actually built the factory that we're currently in right now in downtown Boise. So we've got a 23,000 square foot factory in the middle of downtown Boise. Um, probably not the best place in the world to manufacture as far as a location, um, but it is a really cool building right in the middle of, you know, actually a redevelopment area in Boise. Um, we're lucky to own it. Um, if we didn't own it, we would be kicked out of here like today. Um, but it's, and sometimes our building moves and makes a little noise and we have some big machines that, and our neighbors, mostly tech offices at this point, they kind of put up with us. And we have to get 53 foot trucks in our back alley in downtown Boise and back them out into the busiest streets in Idaho. And we still get that done and the city helps accommodate that and we appreciate that. Um, but Idaho Candy Company, I mean, it's, what I say, it's, a, it's an old nostalgic candy company and I, I keep pretty focused on what we do. Um, people want us to do a lot of different things. Um, you need to make sugar-free candy or you need to do, you know, energy candy or you need to do caffe caffeinated candy. And really I focus on, we are an old nostalgic candy company. And that means our, our best seller and one of our oldest products is the Idaho Spud Bar. And we've been making that, I, it's, my oldest price list is from 1918. And I think it's probably even older than that. I'm pretty sure it's around probably 1913. Um, it's changed through the years, but we still sell a couple million of those Idaho spud bars a year. Um, I, I say it's a candy bar you either love or you hate. Um, if you don't like coconut and marshmallow, it's not going to be your thing, but there are other people who swear it is their all time favorite candy bar. And it, you know, I, I had a guy one time write in, my name is spud and I'm named after the candy bar. And it's really what I live my life around. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit farther than I go with it. But he was, he was all in um, and I'm all in on it too. But I mean, it, it, we, we distribute that candy bar. And when I say we're, we're also a wholesale candy company. So mostly we do most of our business selling to other businesses. And so we don't, we have a small retail store. We also have a website, but mostly we'll sell to Walmart and Winco and Fred Meyer and, you know, URM, which then sells to, you know, different grocery stores up in, you know, up in the Vandal area. And so we're mostly selling through grocery and through, through drug in, you know, in, in larger areas. And so I rely on retail partners to help us move product. I mean, that's really what we do. Um, we also carry um, a couple other candy bars that we manufacture. A couple of them are old. The Cherry Cocktail is a, is a cherry-based candy bar with peanuts and almond. I know it's just peanuts and milk chocolate. And then we also do the Old Faithful. And those are both from the 20s. And then we also do a Huckleberry Jim, which we started making about 10, maybe 15 years ago. And then today on my website today, I put live the Vandal Bar, which is, you know, kind of an exciting addition. Um, we don't, I don't get a new, do new candy bars very often, but uh, it, it, this started up about, oh, it's been more than a year now. Um, when Scott Green first came into to office, he was actually, we were fraternity brothers 
at University of Idaho. So we were Kappa together. Um, Scott was a super senior when I was a freshman. So I didn't know him very well, but I knew it. And, you know, he was good enough to still pay a little bit of attention to a freshman at that point. And it was really cool to have him, you know, take over as, as president of the university. And I probably a month into it, I emailed him and said, hey, Scott, you know, Dave Wagers from Cap Sig, you may or may not remember me, um, but it'd be great if sometime when you're down in Boise, I'd love to take you through the candy factory. And really, the email came back right away. And then he called me after that and we chatted for a little bit and it was good to catch up, you know, kind of where we'd been in life. And the next time he was down in Boise, I think he came down and I think Chandra came down and we toured the candy factory and kind of got an idea. But then we started chatting a little bit and said, hey, you know, maybe we can maybe we can do something together. And so we started dreaming a little bit. And Scott is a really good delegator is what I've learned. Uh, you know, he, he takes on his he takes on his projects and he finds stuff he wants to do. But then he's like, hey, Shander, make this happen. And it turns out Shander's a pretty good delegator, too, because then it's Sandy make this happen. And so that's that's kind of the game we played. Um, but it, it, it has been a really fun process to create a new candy bar in conjunction with a university or, or, you know, any kind of institution. And with Idaho, you know, University of Idaho is actually older than Idaho candy, but, you know, two of the longest lived institutions in the state. And yet we can team together on something and, and kind of make a new new fun product to do. Um, so a little more history on me. Um, you know, I, I was born and raised in Boise, went up through Boise schools, um, and then graduated in 84, and then came to University of Idaho. And, and probably the biggest reason I came um, to University of Idaho is I had a lot of friends going there. I mean, it's really what it came down to. And I was thinking I wanted to be an engineer. And so that was a, a pretty good path to take to go to the, you know, the best engineering school in the state. Um, but I was probably a little lost, a little naive. I was, I was you no, know, not right sure what I was getting into when I hit the university scene. And, and I joined a fraternity because I had, I think there were six guys from Capitol High School who joined the same fraternity the same year. And so I knew a lot of people and it happened to be the Kappa Sig fraternity. Um, and we had it, you know, it was, it was a great group of guys and I learned a lot um, living there. I learned a lot of leadership. I, what I often tell people is I learned to live with 60 guys that I probably wouldn't have picked to live with on purpose. Um, but boy, I, I learned a lot from each one of them. Kerry Gallon's cracking up at that because he's probably thinking the same thing. Um, but you know, you learn to live with different people and work with different people. And I, it was probably one of the most valuable lessons, um, I got while I was up at the university of Idaho is, you know, learning, learning where different people come from different communities. I mean, Kerry came from Payette. I was from Boise and we had people who, you know, who were really cowboys from, from different areas as well. And, you know, you, you learn to appreciate um, what they brought to the table and hopefully they learn to appreciate what you brought to the table as well. Um, I started out in chemical engineering. I, I did that for two years and I realized, oh, this is hard and I, I'm not sure that I want to do that for the rest of my life. Um, and after that, I changed, I changed to finance, which was, a, you know, kind of a big change. My dad w had bought Idaho candy in the meantime. Um, he had gone from an accounting practice to where he bought a candy company to run a candy company. And I, I always swore I would never work for my father. Um, th and that's part of the reason why I wanted to be an engineer. I knew that would, those two would not intersect. Um, I switched over to finance. Um, I was actually, because I had been in the honors program at U of I um, early on, they made, I took a lot of um, more liberal arts electives through that honors program. And so I had taken econ and I'd taken some other classes and I was actually able to graduate in finance in two years, um, in the last two years, my junior and senior year. Mind you, it took 18 credits a semester, every semester for those two years. Um, but it was, you know, it was, I still had a great experience. I mean, the Randy Byers of, of, the, of the world and the Mario Reyes, um, those guys made a big impact on my life. Um, and I continued to keep in contact and actually work a little bit with the College of Business through those guys through the years as well. Um, I graduated in 84. Um, it wasn't the best time in the world to graduate from college. It turns out it was a little bit of a downturn. Um, but the good news is I, I actually ended up with two job offers. My dad was really mad at me when I didn't take a job offer from what was, I, 
I'm not sure if it was still Idaho First National Bank at that point, or if it was West One and now it's US Bank. Um, I remember they started interviewing 300 people and they got it down to six people that they gave offers to. And I, I got an offer and I turned it down um, without another job offer. And my father was extremely mad at me at the time. Um, but I was hoping for another job at the time, which I did end up getting. And it was working for a company called Electronic Data Systems, which was Ross Perot's old company. Um, it was a big corporate uh, environment where I got a chance to live in Texas. And I lived in Virginia and I actually worked in Holland for six months. And so I spent a little over three years working for that company doing finance and accounting in their finance and accounting um, development area. And U of I served me very well during that time frame. Um, and, you know, I was, I was in a small group accounting um, development where they started with like 30 of us to be their accounting and leaders of the future they hoped for their company. And this is a 70,000 employee company. And I think I was the first person to actually end up graduating out of that from my class. And I, I view a lot of that is, you know, U of I taught me how to do that. And it taught me how to le- work with different people. And it taught me how to do those things. So it was, a, it was a good opportunity for me to work on a national basis. But after that, <coughs> my dad brought, I have two older brothers, and he brought us all together and said, okay, does anybody want to come and work for the candy company? Our plant manager's retiring. And this is a finance kid who's going to start manufacturing candy and repairing stuff at a candy factory. And I really didn't want to work for my dad. <coughs> that was its own, um, you know, if you've ever worked in a family business, it's, it's a special opportunity. And my dad was a great businessman. And he was well known in Boise and, and that, that helped a well. Um, but after about three months of considering up the opportunity. Um, my older brothers did not want to do it um, at that point. And I decided to come back and, and take the plunge and work for my dad. Um, and I started out as the plant manager at our candy factory. At that point, we had a distribution business and we had um, a manufacturing business. And I started running the manufacturing business. And I had to go to work in white. So I wore a white 501 jeans and a white button down shirt and a little white paper hat. And uh, and I learned how to make candy. And I went to candy school, which, which is at the University of Wisconsin. Um, and I spent a, you know, about, a, I think it was a month long course there, resident course on how to, how to make candy. And, and I learned how to fix machines. And I spent a lot of hours um, realizing I didn't know very much all over again. You know, as we go through life, when we get new challenges, you get a chance to reinvent. And I learned how to be an electrician and a plumber and, um, a mechanic. And sometimes it was up till one or two in the morning, making sure we could still make candy the next day. Um, and that's, you know, that's been, I think one of the best parts about my job is I get the chance to do all different kinds of things. I get to do engineering some days. I get to do marketing some days. I get to do finance and accounting other days. Um, it, it's really been, you know, an excellent opportunity to become a little more well-rounded and in all that I do. Um, But along with doing the candy company, my dad was also a a pusher on, hey, you need to be involved in the community. Um, This is part of what our company is. We're We're a part of the fabric of Boise and we need to be involved in that. And so he was a Rotarian and he, he wanted me to join his club, which was the main Boise club. And I always called it the rich old man's club. And I, I would go on occasion with him, but I, I would not join that club. And I ended up joining another club. I was brought in by um, another lady that I know, and she was one of the first female Rotarians in, in, in Boise anyway. And she ran a company called Quality Electric. And Marge Hines brought me in, and I've been in Rotary ever since. And I was the youngest guy in my Rotary club for probably 15 years. Um, so I was a 26-year-old hanging out with all these 40, 50, 60-year-olds. Um, but I learned a lot from those people. I mean, that's one thing, you know, it, it was kind of stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and maybe not with your people, but these were really smart business people who were giving back. And so it gave me a chance to learn and maybe what that meant. It also pushed me to lead um, in lots of different ways. I became president of the club within, I think, within four years of being joining the club. Um, so I was the youngest president the club ever had. I had, I had to put it off for a, a year because we became pregnant with twins. And I was like, going, okay, I can't do new twins 
and uh, and get and and run a Rotary Club at the same time. But we did it the year after. Um, I, I you know the bigger what Chandra mentioned too is probably you know one of the biggest influences in my life is marrying my wife Jill, and you know that happened not long after coming back to Boise, and you know we've been so lucky to to have this you know the love hate relationship between the dental and the candy company uh, um, game. But it, my kids always said, oh, dad rots the teeth and mom fixes them. And, but it's, it's been, you know, we've been very lucky to work back and forth and we both have a mindset of giving back. And, you know, it's, it's just, that's the candy company has provided that those, some of those opportunities for me, but it's also creating the opportunities yourself as you go through life. Um, as you know, as, as, Chandra mentioned, I probably the pinnacle of my volunteering at the moment is um, I, I'm, I'm president of the Boise School District Board. I've been president for the last two years. I've been on it for the last eight. I just went through a re-election process this summer, which was somewhat painful, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's part of what you have to do as an elected official these days. Um, and I'm happy to say, you know, we won with about an 80% uh, comeback rate. So people have appreciated the job that we've done. And, you know, I, I, I believe strongly in the fabric of the community. And part of that is our school system and public schools in general, whether it be, you know, public institutions like the University of Idaho or, you know, traditional public uh, K, through, K through 12 education. Um, we need strong supporters and we need to realize that this is what gives everybody a leg up is that chance to have a, a high quality free education for all our kids. And boy, I've learned so much, um, you know, through the pandemic, I was actually approached in the middle of the pandemic about six months into it and said, we would like you to lead the board now through this. Um, that was an adventure. Um, you know, everybody, uh, everybody, uh, there was a lot of support. There was a lot of detractors. Basically any, any decision we made, we made about half the people mad at us at any given time. Um, but that's life. And, you know, or it's part of, you know, sometimes being an elected official and sometimes it's what we do when we, I was elected to, you know, to make decisions is what it came down to. And I, I made those decisions and I believed in the decisions I made based on the information I had um, may not have been the decision that everybody else would have made, but that's, you know, we move forward and away we go. And, and actually the school district is in a great spot today. And I'm, I'm pleased about that. Um, still involved in rotary, you know, 20, more than half my life now. I think I've been in it 28, close to 28 years. Um, I do lots of, you know, still have weekly meetings on that, but, you know, I've been on lots of boards and other, other organizations. Um, Jill and I chose to be foster parents and actually adoptive parents. And I think some of that was through Rotary and our affiliation with a, a group called Hope House, who kind of talk, talked to us and, and we learned about dealing with adopted kids and, and foster kids. And we chose to take that on ourselves. And, you know, that's a whole nother story in itself, but we learned maybe we weren't as good as parents as we thought we were. Um, so we got some lessons along the way, I think, as we all get those in life. Um, but still, it, I think it made me a better school board member because it made me understand a little bit, um, maybe the struggles that different kids have and not the ones that have had the advantages that my children have had. Um, you know, I mentioned briefly my, my three kids. I had, you know, three of them that went up to U of I. And, you know, what a great experience they had. Um, Savannah and Delaney are twins. So they're 23 years old. Kate is 25. Um, Kate was in the SAE house, I think, for like six months before it shut down. Um, but now it's coming back, which is great. Um, he was actually didn't start out at U of I. He started out at University of Puget Sound because he wanted to be a collegiate swimmer. And so he swam for a year and a half collegiately. But then he came to U of I and played lacrosse collegiately for the for this last year and a half. So he got an opportunity to do collegiate sports. Um, still got to hang out with his fraternity friends. Um, Savannah and Delaney, one was a Kappa and one was a Gamma Phi. They both had great experiences. And actually they were able to graduate in three and a half years um, and spent the next, next semester studying for the MCAT. And all three of, all four of them got into medical school, two at University of Utah through the WAMI program. And um, so that's Caden Delaney and then Savannah's at uh, Pacific Northwest University going in their uh, doctor of osteopathy program at uh, in Yakima. So great opportunities and, you know, just so thankful to have that vandal background and, you know, and, and that they were able to find um, 
you know, it's interesting talking to Cade about his experience um, at University of Puget Sound. I mean, excellent university. But what it came down to is for him, he said, Dad, these aren't my people. Um, and he knew so many people up at U of I. And when he transferred up there, uh, I, I think it lit a different light for him. And, you know, it made those were his people. And my girls went there um, because they were their people. And these were, these were great students. I mean, these kids, I mean, Kate out of four, 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 five out of high school, the girls were at least four, two, four, three students. So they had the opportunity to go anywhere they wanted. And, you know, they chose the U of I because excellent opportunity and it's provided them the opportunity they get to move forward in what they wanted to do in a very difficult profession. And what, it, you know, so thanks to U of I for providing those opportunities. All right, that's maybe a, a long, a long, a no. long, Dave. <laughs> that was great. No, I learned some stuff that we haven't talked about in all this. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to also make sure we do, though, and I think I'll bring Sandy Larson into the conversation. I think I'd love for this group to hear a little bit about the process for creating the Vandal Bar. Um, you know, the tasting and figuring out the shape of it and all that stuff. So uh, I'll let you and Sandy go back and forth and, and share that story and how the Vandal Bar came to be. Well, the Vandal Bar, boy, it was a, it was a long process, um, but it was probably the most interesting process I've ever gone through um, in developing a new candy bar. Because usually when it's developing a new candy bar, a new candy for us, it's just, hey, Dave decides this is a good idea. And then Dave thinks we're going to do this. And Dave says we're going to do that. And then we just do it. Turns out the opportunity to work with the University of Idaho, it was, it was, it was a little bit of a well, it was a very different experience, but I, I would actually say it was a better experience. And, you know, I think sometimes when you're running your own company, it's, it's just you and you get used to making the decisions and you just say, oh, they're, you know, I make good decisions, let's go. But we got a chance to do focus groups and, you know, lots of different people involved in ideas and concepts. Um, Sandy, how many how many meetings did we have? Do you think? Do you think we probably had I don't know ten meetings, maybe maybe more than that. I mean, lots of phone conversations, lots of texts, lots of emails, and and lots of different meetings between our focus groups and our creative services team. So maybe maybe close to twenty, I would say. Yeah, and and that's what I really love. The other thing I love about this um, this this bar is it, it is a true vandal bar because it was um you know, it came up between scott and i and chandra i mean we were talking what can we do candy wise so it was developed by vandals the, the the initial concept and then we started to bring in more vandals which was really fun to do and not just vandals but i mean current students and as you know all different kinds of of folks involved in the process and we had some some crazy flavors that we tried for a while and you know some of, and i i didn't get the flavor combinations just right and some of them were just bad um some of them looked terrible i think what the the cough the cafe latte bar yes yes it, it was maybe a little on the dark brown side and diapers. Um, the diapers <laughs> were brought up you know it was not not the best thing ever and then, but, you know, we had banana, we had, you know, I, I first probably came up with a list of about 50 flavors and, you know, we thought, well, we could do beer flavor, but no, you know, as much as the corner club might like that, we're, we're probably not going to go that way. That's, that's not the overall, overall direction we want to go. Um, you know, you could do a whole bunch. So there's lots of options and we probably, we brought together a focus group and we probably went, I brought in flavors from our flavor company. We probably made I was doing a lot of hand pouring of candy bars at that point. We probably started with about 12 or 13 that we tested. And then we went down to about six that we tested again. And I dialed in our flavor combinations a little bit better. And then we decided, oh, well, for shape, we're going to let's, let's see if we can do an eye. And so that's one of the actual molds that we use that we're using to make the, the vandal bar. And for a while it might've been, let's do the eye bar. And you know, there was these, these questions about what to name it and what, what should it look like? And we had old nostalgic 
you know, Joe's and we had newer Joe's and we had, we had for a while, it was going to be the Vandal eye bar and all these iterations that we went through where everybody got input um, and how is this going to work? And, you know, I, I think one of Sandy's saddest moments is when we decided on, on that Vandal, that eye bar that, instead of sexy Joe, uh, which is, we had the, the Joe Vandal laying back and, <laughs> It, Could have been a conversation piece. He was he was a good looking Joe, um, <laughs> but but it, you know instead we get Joe up with his arms in celebration, which I I, I do love at the same time. Um, here's here's a look at what the candy bar looks like inside that as well. So it's in the shape of an eye. This one's not quite perfect, as probably none of them will be, um, but. It is a caramel flavored marshmallow is what we came up with when we were down to, you know, a couple things. And it, it's a soft, soft marshmallow. It's got a little bit of that vandal gold to it, which we love. So it's caramel flavored marshmallow and then it's coated in a really good milk chocolate, our best milk chocolate. And it has a little salt on top of it because, well, I like to say vandals can be a little salty, but uh, it, it cuts the sweetness, which sometimes a marshmallow and milk chocolate can be almost too sweet to handle on your palate. And so it was fun to kind of say, do we want to put stuff on top? I think the last two bars we were looking at, one was a toffee flavored marshmallow and, the, and then with um, sprinkles of toffee on top of it. And then the last one, which we decided, I, actually, I think it was probably Coach X that said, it better be that caramel bar or I'm quitting. Well, we had to keep Coach X. So that's part of the reason, you know, I, I guess we're going with that caramel caramel bar um but it's it's a uh, fun thing is I, I put it up on the website for the first time today so it is live so places where you can get it right now or idaho candy will have it in the store tomorrow i didn't have it in the store today i actually was building a display for it today um uh the vandal store in boise has it so it's available there we put it in there um last week and they've already sold through their first i think two boxes so a couple hundred bars already without any knowledge that it was there. They're showing up at the Vandal store in Moscow tomorrow. So they'll have like a thousand bars to start out with. Um, we were a little worried if we were gonna make, you know, are we gonna have enough in the middle of Christmas season and how is this gonna work? And I'm actually gonna do a run of about 10,000 next week. And so hopefully I'm pretty sure that should take us through Christmas, but you know, what a fun thing to have in your stocking for a Vandal, but a Vandal bar. So that's a little, I mean, Sandy, can you add any more to the process there? No, I think you covered everything. We had, um, the. It, it was really my just personal take on everything. It was just great having, we worked with our creative services team and they did a really, it was just great to see everyone's interpretation of how the bar, the packaging should look. Um, we had, we kind of sent out some surveys about how important people thought the middle should be represented like a, a vandalish color like a yellow or a gold and we kind of did some reiterations like Dave said one was kind of diaperish looking but we did bright yellow that looked more um artificial so we kind of went against that the caramel is a very natural flavor or natural color inside it looks like a caramel color so it was just that the whole process was just interesting and hearing everybody's take on everything was just uh, a, a joy to work on so um you made it well, so easy but it was so fun to hear, you know, people have definite opinions about food. For sure. And I didn't always know, like, I kind of like the banana one, but we had people in our test group that wouldn't even try the banana one. Lauren, They're like, on the I call. am not going to, I am not going to taste that. And it's like, I don't do banana. It's like, okay. But, you know, we all have those things that we like or we don't like. And, and you know, sometimes I project and, and that's, this is why it was a better process to go through. And the other thing you just brought up, Sandy, I, a big shout out to John Barnhart and his team um, as far as they're the most sophisticated packaging group that I have ever worked with. And I work with large pack and packaging companies, but the prototypes they were able to build and show me um, and make it look real, you know, it, it, what they were sending out is Sandy's backdrop. That's not a real candy bar. That's what they created for their, you know, their, their images. And they were able to do that. And it just, it made the decision-making process, I think more valuable. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. 
And the students that served on that, they were really passionate about it. And we, what was nice is we kind of let them run with it at first. And they came up with like, I think it was six or eight different concepts and very different concepts. And from there, we were able to narrow it down. But really any one of those would have made a great rapper. I mean, it really would. And, and what I love about what we came out up with is that is really gonna pop from the shelf that it also screams, you know, University of Idaho with the colors, with the vandal, with Joe there. Um, you know, it's, I, I love that, that fact of it, that it, it really does, I think it will represent the university well. And, and for those of you who don't know who John Barnhart is on the call, he is um, our marketing director. And so what Dave is saying is our internal team did all the work. We didn't contract outside to design this packaging. This was done by all University of Idaho people, which is a point of pride. To, I know John's team is very proud of this project. So um, thanks for thanks for giving them the shout out. <laughs> well, and, and they and they should be. Like I said, I mean, I, it was so easy. I sent it to my packaging company and the package, they, you know, as far as the graphics, it was, it was done. You know, it was like, oh, yeah. Okay, you know, I was able to send that to him and really we, we were able to get it back in three weeks. And during this time frame right now, I mean, it's hard to get packaging back in, in six to 12 weeks a lot of times. And they were, because it was already done, there was no adjustments that we really needed to make to what they gave me. And I'll do a little side note of the process. Um, President Green did drop by and do some tasting himself. <laughs> oh, okay. they were in the process. I don't know if it was once or twice, but... Um, well, I think he was, <laughs> yeah, he was by a couple times. Plus we sent him samples to try, you know, along the way. So he, I, I think between, actually, I think everybody was happy at the end with the caramel, caramel choice. Um, and I'm, I'm actually still even doing a little tweaking as we go. So on that bigger run we're doing next week, I'm going to change the flavor just a little bit again. Um, but cause I want it to be perfect. I had new. And, you know, once we get to larger production runs like 10,000, you know, we, we got to do it right. And I, but I'm, I'm very, very close, but it's just a little more dialing each time until I get it to right where I want it to be. Sandy, did you have any questions you wanted to throw out? Uh, no, I was going to add to that. Um, we kind of have, the, I've been pushing the Vandal Candy, the uidaho.edu slash Vandal Bar on the chat below. Um, that kind of has a history of it, but we are going to continue to incorporate some pictures of the tastings and things like that. I will be sending a video that has not been seen outside of uh, a few eyes here that I'll send out after the um, talk is over tonight. But um, it's just kind of fun to see the whole process that when Dave and I made up the first batch um, last last Monday, I think it was Dave, just the mm -hmm. whole, I took pictures of that whole process and just Kind of seeing from the factory standpoint, just seeing it all come together and then get to the package that's sitting behind me um, has just been uh, one of the coolest projects that I've been a part of. So, um, but seeing the whole process is interesting to people. It was fascinating to me. I love factories, but um, seeing that whole thing from it'd be make all of you vandals uh, even more proud to see all that went into it from behind the scenes. So, we're gonna we're gonna put all that stuff on the the website as we kind of build it out a little bit. So. And um, one of the things that even started this conversation is President Green said, I want something that I can throw at the students when I visit the high schools and give them, you know, give them, give them something that, to remember us by when, we, when he does have a chance to do that. And so um, we'll be using uh, the candy bars to recruit students. <laughs> Which I think, good. <laughs> oh, that's great. And, and, you know, throwing out candy, it's really fun. Uh, and maybe we'll do that this, you know, we, we have an old Idaho spud truck that we drive in parades. It's like a 1929 Ford. And usually we do the Cascade Parade every 4th of July. And maybe we'll do vandal bars instead of Idaho spud bars this year, um, just to kind of get it out there and say, okay, let's give it a shot. Um, but I'm really good at throwing candy because I've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. I can but I'm sure you, we can teach Scott to, to, to <laughs> nail somebody in a crowd when he finds that right kid to throw it to. It'll be great fun. That's uh, so candy throwing lessons, we need that. <laughs> There's some really great notes in the chat too. Um, it looks like someone you used to work with, Mr. Ross. Um, a very nice note. You need to make sure you see those, Dave. Okay, I'll, I'll take a look um, at them. Someone that worked for you at Idaho Candy for 15 years ago. 
This meeting's reminded me how fun it was to work for you, Dave, and the Idaho Candy family. Lots of creative fun, very family oriented. Nice, very nice. Wow. I know you did have a, a chance nice to see those. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, one of the other questions I have um, that was sent to me by private chat was, do you have any recommendations on how to get involved in the small community of Moscow and to become with involved with the Rotary Club specifically, new member of the community um, and a junior in the College of Business and um, didn't have the connections that you may have had. So do you have any advice um, they're asking of how to get involved? Well, with with Rotary, you know, it you got to have a little guts, but a lot of us just show up. Um, you know, most Rotary clubs, they are very welcoming of new members. Um, and, you know, in, in Boise, we've got five separate Rotary clubs, but we are always looking for folks that are community minded. Um, you know, we do lots of community projects and not only do we, we do international projects. Um, it has been, a you know, my wife and I have traveled and we've done, I mean, through a Rotary connection, we've done dentistry with our kids in like five different countries. And also some medical and through that most of that started through it or initially through a rotary contact of mine and she's you know she said we'll come to peru and bolivia with us and we went to peru and bolivia and we did backcountry dentistry in plastic chairs well i should say we my wife did and i washed i washed uh my i was in charge of washing and, and instruments but i didn't do too much useful but uh to watch her get to you know apply her trade in in the middle of nowhere and really make people feel, um, you know, to save them in some ways, it was spectacular. And Rotary provided those opportunities. So I, I encourage anyone, and actually, if, if you're a younger student and to go, I mean, Rotary has opportunities for all ages. We do, you know, young student um, exchanges. So we have, but we also have like Rotary Peace exchanges for older students and graduate students. Um, some of it's just going to a meeting and say, hey, I want to learn a little more about Rotary. Can I, you know, can I attend a meeting? And they will, I, I don't know a single club that would say no to that question. Um, but it, it, once again, it's having the guts to show up and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to walk into this group where I don't always feel like I'm going to fit in. And, um, you know, I did that. My first six months in Rotary were hard because you had to spend the time to get to know people and make them realize, oh, they're, they're, he's serious, you know, he's going to stay, um, he's going to keep coming. And, you know, and then I dived in, started doing all the projects and had my kids do the projects. My wife did the projects. Um, you know, a little shout out to her family, they're lions mostly, which I love the lions club as well. Her grandfather was one of the founding fathers of, um, Boise bench lions in Boise and her dad and mom, both are lions and Jill is a member of the lions group. Um, and so any, you know, pick it, I don't care, but it's, it's one of those community organizations that gives back, but it gives you a chance to interact with other people that way. It's been great for me. Okay. One of the other um, things that came in, it was not a question, but more um, one of our, our viewers said um, they had general excitement for the Vandal Bar that it was finally happening. They read about the Idaho Candy Company and Steve Almond's Candy Freak and That's has nice. wanted this to happen um, for a while, had learned about Dave, about you, Dave, and your dad, um, and that you were alum. So they were very excited to to see this actually come to fruition. So that was fun. Um, most of the other questions that we're getting are um, about where you can buy the Vandal Bars. Dave kind of mentioned that the Vandal Store. Um, I you saw in the group chat that they are now selling it. They have a link as well through the Vandal Store, both online and in the stores in Boise and Moscow, starting tomorrow. Um, and then through Dave's store at IdahoCandyCompany.com. Um, is there a minimum number of candy bars um, was a question that I was asked? Um, on our website, no. So you can okay. buy, them, buy them by the single. Of course, the problem is shipping that goes along with all those things. And we don't make any money on shipping. We just charge direct shipping. Um, and that's still another project we're working on. And I should bring that up. So yeah. right now, we don't even have boxes for these yet. And that's been more of a function of how I buy um, our supplies. So when I buy Idaho Spud Bar boxes, I buy usually 50,000 50, boxes at a time. And so, you know, that's enough for about a million bars at a time. And, but I only do that a couple times a year and that helps me get to price on those. And we're gonna use the same shape box that we use for the Idaho Spud Bar. And so we have actually 
the graphics team has developed the box, which has been great, but I have to wait until our next order of Idaho Spud Bar boxes is coming through. And, and I think that'll probably be um, probably late January or early February. And then we'll have 18 count grocery store boxes. And then you can expect to see them in the grocery stores. But until I have that box, I can't sell them in the grocery stores. And really, you know, that, that, that'll be my goal is, you know, we'll have them in the Walmart in Moscow. We'll have them, you know, in all the, you know, in, in the Rosars, we'll have them in all those grocery stores and we'll be able to make those things happen. But until I get that box set up, I can't get into, you know, the local, the local grocery stores and, and, you know, and the national chains for that matter. But we will get it done. Um, and, and it should be by the end of, you know, this school year, we should be able to start that kind of distribution where you will be able to go to the store, especially if they have collegiate sections and a lot of grocery stores do now, where we can say, oh, I'm going to go pick up a vandal bar. And that's when we'll really, you know, become a little bit more prolific with what we do. Right now, it'll be an initial push, which is kind of fun, um, you know, and, and, and not everybody will have them. So really, they are a special thing. Um, like I said, if you can get one in your stocking, not many, not many people are going to have those yet. So it, it's kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, one of the questions we kind of touched on this was about how many people total worked on this project um, and how long did it take from start to finish? Um, we talked about you and Scott and Chandra started talking about it October of 2021, right? And then I was brought in in mm -hmm. February and then we just we just went to production on we. Do you like how I say that? We. You went to production <laughs> last week. Oh, the, Sandy, you were a big piece. Oh, the first run. I was standing there right by you. Um, I got to help make pour in some stuff and stir stuff with Dave. Um, and that was last Monday, right, Dave? I think it was. Yep. And so that yep. was the first batch. And and we had some some mess ups in there and and Dave has been perfecting it ever since. Yeah, we, we will have actually in our store, we're also going to have some Vandal Bar rejects. <laughs> 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 we, sell, we sell rejects in our store of Idaho Spud Bars and Idaho Spud Bites and things like that that aren't quite perfect. And so if you want the real deal, um, you'll need to come to the store and we'll have, um, we'll have some bags of those. I'm not sure. I, we're not going to have those tomorrow. So don't, don't come tomorrow for those. Um, but we'll probably, you know, it'll be like $6 for a, for a two and a half pound bag of Vandal Bars. Um, but they won't be wrapped and the eye may be misshapen or have a little hole in it or something like that. But, uh, that's part of what we do too. That's kind of our secret, uh, secret store deals is we have rejects on our candy bars. Excellent. They still taste and, good. <laughs> and you know what I want to say too, that I never said at the beginning is that, um, from the university of Idaho perspective, um, we are super grateful, Dave, that you 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 did some of your own personal investment to donate back to make this all happen. And um, I should be thanking you for that too, because I don't know that we would have been able to do it otherwise. So well no, and then you know that's that's part of the process. I was told it, it takes about usually about fifteen, fifteen thousand dollars to start a new product for me. And so because we, you know, it's it's this we have to buy printing plates and we have to buy, you know, box cutting dies and and things like that that go along with it. So, um, you know, happy to, and, and then another piece of it is we talked about, I'm going to try and, you know, we had, to, I had to learn how to register with the NCAA. And so we're now an officially licensed program, um, you know, with, with the NCAA and they take, you know, they get some money and then that goes back to the university, but I'm also going to donate a certain amount of money per bar back to the university as well. I've got to figure out exactly what that is. Um, so hopefully that, you know, ongoing money, cash flow. Vandals buying Vandal products going back to the University of Idaho. And, you know, I love that piece of kind of what we've designed um, along with this. David, why don't, you, why don't you give some NIL to the quarterback? <laughs> I know that's David Hawk. I could hear that. I, I know that voice. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's a piece of it. We, you know, it, it'd be the right people to promote it, wouldn't it? A couple other questions I have for you, Dave, is how many people work at the Idaho Candy Company and what is your favorite candy besides the uh, the um, Vandal Bar? So we know that's your new favorite, but what's your what's your favorite prior to the Vandal Bar being produced? Well, there's a couple, you know, it, it, I, I'm, you know, we've got about 40 different candies that we make and some of them I don't barely eat at all. And some of them I eat fairly often. The, the ones I, I go, my, my go-to candies in the past anyway, have been 
my the old faithful bar and that's a, a gooey marshmallow with um, peanuts and milk chocolate um i love that candy bar we wouldn't make it if i didn't love it because we don't make very much money on it because it's hard to make it's one of those things i just keep we, we're going to keep doing it because i love the bar um i like our chocolate caramel peanut clusters I like our French burnt peanuts, which we're considering doing also another little vandal project with those. So those are the red bumpy nuts. And I'm considering seeing if we can do some black and gold ones. And so if we can dye them, but I've got to get the black so it doesn't make your tongue black at the same time, because that's not a, not a great look. So still working on that little project. Um, but the red burnt peanuts, I love to take those, you know, as something to set out. And so those are kind of my, my key, my key, and then why he butter toffee actually. And we do a lot of that at Christmas. Um, and I just love that. That's really good candy. So those are, those are kind of my key things. As far as the number of people, it's, it's a small business. Um, we normally have about 22 people, but at Christmas time, we're probably up closer, maybe up to 40 even. And for Christmas for us starts in August, actually. And a funny little thing about our business is peanut brittles turned into a much larger piece of our business, which it wasn't always. And I start making truckloads of peanut brittle in August that we're selling to grocery store chains across the country. Um, and it's a good item because it's got a little bit longer shelf life, but uh, we now can ship that across the country. We started in August and it's still great through Christmas. And it, it's, it's been a good little thing. So we go up to around 40 people, but then really we'll be back down to our 22 the week of Christmas, you know, so it's, it's a little up and down sometimes, but, um, and then we'll just keep that nice steady flow, which, which is made possible by the Idaho Spud Bar and, you know, the other candy bars and hopefully the Vandal Bar will be a good year round bar for us. The Huckleberry Gem has been turned into a good bar for us. Um, so it's been kind of fun to see those, you know, where we can maintain a good, good, you know, good group for good group of employment for our folks too. Great. Well, um, Sandy just gave me the note that um, she always likes to finish on time um, with these Cup of Joes. Um, I, if, I don't think there must be any more questions she had in the queue, but um, she did say she's going to send out an email to follow up with the links for the Vandal Bar and everything, and this video is recorded, so if you want to tell anybody about it, she'll, she'll send you the link to where you can find the video, right, Sandy? Yeah. Yeah, it'll um, be ready in about two weeks. Um, but I'll give you the link where our U the university has a YouTube channel, and I'll provide the link in the email that I'll send uh, this evening to all of you. So, well, and I want to thank everyone for spending time with us, and I want to especially thank you, Dave, for everything you're doing to bring this product to market. But for your devotion to the University of Idaho, for sending three kids to the University of Idaho, and um, just you know. It's it, the cup of Joe. The point of the cup of Joe is for all of us to join together and get that same kind of energy that you do when you're around other vandals and realize what a special family it is and all the great contributions vandals are making to the world. So Dave, you're a great example and I just appreciate everything you've done. <laughs> thanks for well, being here. Oh, thanks, Shander. I mean, it's, it's, it's a joy. And, and, you know, going to the U of I really did make an impact on my life and it's made an impact on my entire family's life. Um, so happy, happy to give back and, and you now happy to have a way to continue to give back. I mean, and, uh, you know, I imagine we'll have a basket of Vandal bars at the Vandal scholarship, you know, auction in February, or I can't remember the exact date, but it's, I, I know, I know that's coming. So you, you know, there'll be stuff to bid on, which will, which will be great fun. Um, and it's, you know, it's, I've got another group of friends, which actually I just, you know, Rick Sparks is on here. Some people are new friends, um, newer friends from Vandal Land, which is great. And we end up, you know, going up to Vandal games together and doing things like that through another friend who is Vandal. And, you know, it's funny how the connections still work, even in, even later in life. So it's, it's a great, a great university. And it was a good experience. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone on the, on the Cup of Joe here. I see many names. And so thank you all for joining us today and go Vandals.